In Wales, ancient traditions persisted up until modern times. As with the rest of the world, a lot of our traditions and customs have been lost or fallen out of practice, the same as our traditional costume, because everyone wants to wear the same brands now. Thanks, America. In this video, I want to share with you how the Welsh year used to work based on what remaining counts we have. I'll be including the key dates and traditions important to Welsh people up until recently. Yr hen galan, New Year's Day. Wales' New Year's Day was traditionally celebrated on January 12th, not January 1st as we do now. This tradition still lives on in one tiny area of Sir Benro called Cungwain. On New Year's Day, you would observe the tradition of the apple gift, where children would decorate apples by making a tripod with sticks stuck into the base. It would be smothered with oats or wheat and decorated with thyme or sweet evergreen. Its origins are thought to be pagan and druidic in nature, with the three sticks representing sun rays, the apple representing the sun, and the decoration symbolizing perennial life. The gift was supposed to ensure you had enough money and beer for the coming year. In Pembrokeshire, it was considered to invoke good luck if you gift your neighbor with a loaf of bread, but only if the gift was given by a man and he was your first visitor of the year. To be gifted a loaf of bread by a woman was considered bad luck. In parts of Wales, particularly southern Wales, the Mary Lloyd was celebrated. This is the tradition where the skull of a horse is secured by young men of the village and then dressed in favors of many colors. And on the 12th night of the new year, they carry this object around the village where the Mary Lloyd then knocks on your door and you engage with it in back and forth series of rude rhymes. If the Mary Lloyd gains entry to your house, you will gain good luck for the year. The tradition is still observed in some parts of Wales, like Conlava near Port Talbot, where the tradition is honoured by the Brit pub. Dirnod San Doinwen, St. Doinwen's Day. St. Doinwen's Day is Wales' answer to St. Valentine's Day. On St. Doinwen's Day, it is traditional for men to make and give their love, lover, or fancy a love spoon. These are carved by hand and great effort and time is taken to make them. The traditional is still observed to some extent and love spoons are sold in Welsh gift shops all over Wales. Dith Goyal Dewi St David is the patron saint of Wales. We're not going to get into why this is in this video as this is a video about traditions and customs. In modern Wales, a leek or daffodil is worn on the traditional costume. Historically, a leek is worn by men. This tradition is thought to have origins in a battle, but which battle is not exactly clear. The source I have says that there was a battle between Britons and the Saxons. The Saxons had dressed as Britons in an attempt to easier defeat the Britons. St. David ordered the Britons to mark themselves out by wearing a leek. In modern Wales, a special effort is made to make pika out of mine with the children and eat cow. Deeth Mouth and Id, Shrove Tuesday. Shrove Tuesday is traditionally celebrated before Lent all over the UK, but the practice of eating pancakes or creme bog is thought to have originated in Wales, or at least with Brythonic people, and is possibly a more ancient tradition that predates Christian religion. Unfortunately, Wales had another pretty horrible tradition by modern standards for Shrove Tuesday. On this day, a custom called throwing at hens was observed. Sadly, this is where villagers would flail hens that would stop laying eggs until they were dead, as they were deemed useless. And if you manage to kill a hen with one hit, you've got to keep her and eat her. As someone who owns chickens, uh, some of which do not lay anymore, this was quite upsetting to read about. Seal a blow die, Palm Sunday. Sealy Blowdy was an especially important tradition across Wales. The Welsh name translates to Flowering Sunday. On this day, you would adorn the graves of your ancestors with flowers. In the Christian tradition, it's associated with strewing the palms before Jesus Christ before entering to Jerusalem. But the practice was also observed by the Druids in celebration of the awakening of life. Gwener y Grogleth, Good Friday. In Pembrokeshire, it was traditional to walk bare feet on Good Friday. The belief was to walk barefoot was to not disturb the earth. 
A stranger tradition observed on Good Friday was making Christ's bed. This is a tradition where quantities of river reeds were gathered and assembled into the shape of a man. The effigy was then stretched across a wooden cross and laid out in a field. But being that the Christian tradition does not allow the making or worship of idols, this probably has origins in the Celtic pagan Wicca man. In North Wales, the day before Good Friday, known as Holy Thursday, had an unusual superstition attached to it. It is thought to have originated with the Druids. If an eagle was seen perching on a stone and sharpening its beak, this was an omen of an impending battle, as the eagle was thought to be sharpening its beak to consume the carcasses of the fallen. Sela Pask, Easter Sunday. On Easter Sunday, to ensure good luck, it was customary to wear a new item of clothing, sometimes something as small as a ribbon. It was thought if you did not, dogs would spit at you and curse you. The eve before Easter Sunday, a bell from the village was chosen to drink the brag out, a mix of honey and ale or mead and ale. The bell was given a special piece of china ware made especially for this custom. It was shaped like a crown and had spaces for lit candles to be held. The bell would then have to drink from the crown without burning herself while the villagers shouted, Prague Irvainwen Hlosky Ethalken, lest the maiden burn her forehead. This tradition seems to have served no purpose other than a fun drinking game before the very sobering Easter Sunday. Stockshaw was a custom observed in Aberconry till 1835. On Easter Sunday, crowds of men and boys would carry wands of gorse up to Pentworth Hill, and there they would proclaim the laws for the following day. Men under 60 were to wake before 6am, men under 40 were to wake before 4am, and men under 20 were to stay up all night. If you disobeyed this rule, you were sent to the stock. Callan Mai, Mayday As in England, Wales traditionally celebrated May Day, with the erection of a maypole known as Bedwen in Wales, signifying its construction from birch, a tree associated with positive, gentle emotions. The maypole was a point of pride for each village and was protected as they would often be stolen by other villages. On this day, maidens would give a branch of birch to a suitor they wished to court, accepting his address. However, if a maiden was to give a branch of Colin or Hazel, the opposite was true. Brennan who have a Brennan who gay have, the summer and winter kings. It's not known the exact dates of this tradition, but it's likely that it happened at the start of summer around May. The tradition is only noted to have happened in one village near Bracken called Divanog. In this tradition, the custom of carrying a summer king and a winter king. The two boys were chosen to serve as two kings. Both were covered in bows of birch. The summer king had a crown of coloured ribbons placed atop his head, and the Winter King a crown of holly. A procession was then formed, led by two men with drawn swords to clear the way. Four men supported the Summer King upon two poles, one under his knees and one under his arms, and the same for the Winter King. The kings were then paraded around the village, stopping off at every house and farm, where along the way they would collect coins or beer as gifts. The procession would then meet at the churchyard, where the boys would be set free and given a door for their services. The Summer King would always receive a higher share than the Winter King. Can all have Midsummer Eve. In 1878, a custom was recorded in Pontypridd where villages in the area would light bonfires and feast in the face of the sun on the summer solstice. This custom is thought to be the last remnant in Wales of a tradition resembling Beltane in Scotland. Deed San Canog, St. Canog's Day. This tradition is only recorded once and sadly on its last known performance. Canog was the son of Brachan Brachainog and had his life celebrated in the village of Devanog. In this honouring tradition, a man was paid for his services with a new suit or money. But on the last time this was performed, a drunken farmer was chosen to perform the custom. He was dressed in dilapidated clothes, marched by villagers to the river, where he tumbled into the river and then scrambled out the other side. It's not known why the tradition died out or why the villagers decided to make a mockery of the farmer. 
perhaps the villagers had lost the meaning of the custom and decided to stop practicing it, or it may have been outlawed by local religious authorities. It's thought that walking the man down to the river where he would have to scramble out may have come from a Druidic tradition of river sacrifice. Bog bodies have been found in water or near water in many places. Noson Kalangeyav, First Night of Winter. Noson Kalangeyav was historically one of the most important dates to the Welsh folk. It signifies the start of winter and is one of the Teirnos Splodnos, the three nights for spirits. The other nights being May Day and Midsummer's Eve. On this night, ghosts, fairies, and mysterious spirits roam the land. This is probably where the American Halloween tradition of dressing up as spooky things originates, as Welsh and Irish immigrants had similar superstitions around this night. On this night, it was a held belief that spirits could be conjured by enchantments to give glimpses into the future, especially on the subject of marriage. It was customary for young people to gather and seek by way of tricks and charms to become better acquainted with their desired lovers, with tricks or treats you might say. On this night in North Wales, a tradition survived where people would run through a bonfire. The only other place this is known to have happened is in rural areas of Ireland. In both cases, this is thought to have originated as a druidic sacrifice. Along the Welsh borders existed a custom where children would knock on doors, recite poems, rhymes and songs, and ask for a half penny, similar to the tradition of Christmas caroling. A practical joke was played all over Wales to unsuspecting visitors, where a jug would be presented full of ale. The guests would be asked to drink the contents, the entire contents, but on the jug was cleverly disguised two holes that blended into the decoration one at the top and one at the bottom, which can be stopped by knowing where to place your fingers, but would leave the unsuspecting guest drenched in ale to the delight of the spectators. Apple bobbing, or tuco am avali, was thoroughly enjoyed across Wales, bearing large similarities with the apple bobbing that still happens now, except with one difference. Rather than try to catch the apples with the mouth, the players would use a stick. At one end of the stick was a hook, at the other end a candle, the aim of the game was to hook an apple before the candle burned down and singed your hair. On or around the time of Noson Kalangeyav, Urach was put up. This usually happened around the time of Harvest Festival. It is an effigy made from a sheaf of corn. It's manipulated to form a woman's body and then stood upright. The reapers of the corn would then stand about 10 yards away and throw their sickles at the Rach and try and knock it down. The person successful in knocking the Rach down would then take it home to be hung from a beam where it would stay until the next harvest. But the household would be warned of its coming and would make its entry into the house difficult. The bearer of the Rach would essentially try to sneak or coerce his way into the house with it. Anyone suspected of being the bearer would be rough handled by the women folk of the village. In order for the custom to be completed successfully, the Rach had to be delivered into the house dry. And so, if caught with it, the women would attempt to throw water and all manner of liquids all over it. If the bear managed to get it home successfully, he was given a place of honour and privilege at the Harvest Festival. Nadolig Christmas In Wales, Christmas is especially celebrated. In most Christian countries, the celebrations of Christmas last for 12 days, but previously they had last a lot longer than that in Wales. In modern times, it's a tradition that children receive gifts on Christmas Day. In the 1800s in Wales, it was recorded that children received gifts and sweets every day for two weeks leading up to Christmas. It was a time-honoured tradition that male voice choirs from neighbouring towns and villages had friendly competition when it came to singing Christmas carols. But this was not always so. Some reports of especially terrible musicians and singers of being chased out of the town. I guess we are the land of song because we drive a certain standard. In almost all of Wales, it was a tradition at Christmas to decorate the house in evergreens, holly, ivy and ferns. A tradition again thought to have druidic origins, with the evergreens representing perennial life in the darkest days of the year, which is probably the origin of the Christmas wreath. Christmas Eve and day coincide with the winter solstice, where there was the custom of plugging, watching for the dawn. 
where villagers would be up at 3 a.m. to convene at the church and then stay outside holding candles waiting for the dawn sunrise. In Pontypri, there is recorded the feast of Alban Arthur, celebrating the birth of the new sun. The tale follows that from the 22nd of December, the sun fights with Avagdi, the spirit of darkness, and on the third day, the sun wins and the bards strike the harps and the sun reappears. The tradition may have had prehistorical roots, or it may be an invention by Yolan Morganig during the Druidic revival. Boxing Day I bet at some point of your life you've wondered why Boxing Day is called Boxing Day. It has nothing to do with boxes or boxing. Well, although this tradition wasn't unique to Wales at the time, Boxing Day as a tradition lasted longer in Wales than in other parts of the UK. The custom was that you would supply a friend or neighbour with a Christmas box, and this would contain perhaps bread, cheese, milk or meat. But the idea was that you gifted something to help your neighbour or friend. The problem was not everyone could afford to do this. In England in 1837, the English Secretary of State actually appealed to the excellencies to discontinue the affair because postmen and messengers were demanding higher payments for delivering the boxes, which most people could not afford. And the Christmas gift box was declared to be an unnecessary nuisance. Strangely, the tradition lasted longer in Wales, in barber shops of all places.